we're at the start of a brand new season, new format, new teams. The general question you ask to everyone, men or women, at this time of season is how excited are you for the start of the season? Yeah, super excited. Um, it's a, it feels a long way away at the minute, actually, though. You know, a good couple of months of pre-season ahead. Um, the start of the season feels a long way when you're doing... You know, all the conditioning runs and running up hills at Round 8 Park. <laughs> you wish the season had come around quick, but um, hard work to do in the meantime. Um, you know, our girls got back together last week for pre-season. Um, great vibe amongst the group. You know, it's always it's like the first day back to school, isn't it? Everyone's excited to see everybody after a bit of a break, um, but certainly refreshed and ready to go. Last two seasons, you've won two of the three trophies available. Last year, big underdogs going into the grand final and the Challenge Cup final, but you won both. Lots of pressure on you to repeat this season? No, I don't think so. Like, was there pressure on us the year before because we'd played both grand finals? You know, it's, you know, pressure probably comes from outside, but, you know, we don't worry about those things too much. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be an exciting year. Who knows what this year's going to deliver with having to make the top four and then having to make the top two. Who knows, you know, and that, that's probably what makes the 2020 season so exciting. What do you make about that format change? Obviously, you've got the, the first round you play everyone either home or away, yeah. then the league splits and you've got those four top four signs. Those games are going to be super intense. Yeah, they will be. And I think that's, I really like the format just as for what you just said, it's going to be intense. Um, following on from the World Cup nines and then the girls too are down to PNG and things. I think um, we can do with a few more intense games um, from an international point of view. We'll only do them good and, and coming into the back end of the year, Ashes against Australia, World Cup 2021 on home soil, they're the sort of games that you want to be playing. So um, yeah, good decision and I'm looking forward to playing in the new format. Were you ever in much doubt that you'd be playing this year? There seemed to be some questions at the end of last year about whether you would go again yeah. this year. Yeah, definitely there was. Um, it was a genuine decision I had to sit down and make. Um, was I going to play cricket? Was I going to play rugby league? Or was I going to simply just sit down and have a rest from all things for a little while? Like, so many decisions to make. Um, but I went home to Oz for a couple of weeks, which gave me some nice time to just... Know, sit down and breathe and remove myself from the rugby league sort of headspace and a, and a busy headspace that the 2019 season brought. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with my decision and um, just looking forward to, you know, more learning for myself um, and more building together as a group at, at the Rhinos. Well, you know this at Leeds and, and across many of the clubs you've got some, a core of experienced players with lots of young players coming through we saw in the, the grand final with Fran Goldthorpe scoring those two tries it seems to be an exciting time for the young players coming through as well well absolutely I wish I was their age at the minute um, I'm, I'm closer to, to wrapping up and hanging the boots up than they are but I think it's so exciting for them you know where the game could go in the next couple of years you know I hope that these girls that are coming through the academy if there's a genuine opportunity for them to be professional before their career's out. Uh, and I suppose that's where players who are um, at the back end of their career, um, you know, that, that we can push and shove and stomp a little bit and hopefully, you know, create a more professional environment for these girls because they deserve it. Um, and our game will plateau un until we do. And when we give our girls the opportunity to, to train professionally and more full time, I think, you know, we'll see more leaps and bounds taken in the women's game. Obviously, the product on the field is, is good. It's a good standard. I enjoy watching it. People enjoy watching it and see it. I guess it's a matter of getting more eyes on that product and, and more people coming to watch the games. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've, we've made some inroads last year with live on BBC and then um, on Sky for the final. So... Those viewer rates, I had a look at them the other day actually, and you know, they were pretty impressive. So there's obviously an audience there, um, and as a business, I suppose there's an audience there you provide. Um, so he's, he's hoping that we, that's just the start of many good things to come, and um, an exciting two years ahead, and hopefully after 2021 it'll, it'll boost again. 
and well, obviously looking forward to some great fixtures when you play Castle with again after the great battles you had last year. Saints a great side last year as well. All three of you, the bookmakers, make you the joint favourites to win the title. No one's sure who's going to win. Oh, that really? must make it exciting. Yeah, definitely. But um, look, I don't, I, I don't think we can rule out some of the others. Like I said, this new format will be incredibly interesting. There'll be twists and turns. Um, but in, in saying that, I think fair call in, in those three clubs being you know, up there amongst teams being spoken of. Um, Cass brilliant team, had a wonderful year last year, um, St Helens have recruited incredibly well and had a good season themselves, so um, Bradford, they were unlucky to miss out last year, can they build as well, so who knows, I don't have a crystal ball of you. <laughs> uh, sadly not, if I did I'd have more money than I have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and two new teams in the competition finally, strengthening it, oh, well, spreading the uh, the gospel of the, the sport in the top yeah. division with Warrington and Huddersfield joining this year. Yeah, um, really exciting for, for those clubs. I mean, we crossed Warrington last year in the Challenge Cup and despite the scoreline, I think um, they were quite impressive in patches. And uh, speaking to Roxy earlier, I think they've got a, a few good recruits as well. Um, so uh, regardless of, of where they finish on the ladder, it'll be exciting for them given it's their foundation year. So, um, and, and Huddersfield have got along to... Uh, they played our academy at one point last year, so I got to watch the under-19s play them and uh, really impressed. There's a couple of really good players. Um, if they can build around them, uh, certainly that'll be a, another good local derby for us. Final, final one, because I did remember this. We talk a lot about players going from Super League to the NRL. Yep. Was your teammate Charlotte Booth just going over to Australia as well? How yeah. do you think she'll get on over there? Oh, look, all for her to do that. I'm, I'm quietly jealous that she's gone home to my state of Queensland. Um, but yeah, good on her. Like I said before she left, what an opportunity um, for her to go and develop as a, as a player but an experience to broaden her horizons as a person. So. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll certainly be, all the girls at, at the Rhinos, be cheering her on and, and keeping a close eye on how she's going at Brisbane.